My great-grandpa-in-law owes $1.82 million. In-laws dumped him on me, but he knew it was coming. Emily, is grandpa behaving himself? Patricia, kind of. He hurt his leg. Old people can be such a hassle. I wish they would consider how it affects those of us who have to care for them. Emily, that's not a nice thing to say. Patricia, it's all right. He's already declining quite a bit. I can't deal with the fuss of old people, but you're used to it, so you'll be fine. The other day, my husband's grandfather Michael fell in the garden and hurt his leg. It's not a serious injury, but he's already 82 years old. Because of his age, we're having him rest in bed just to be safe so it doesn't get worse. My mother-in-law won't even go near him. Let all take care of him. I'm Emily, 30 years old. I married three years ago and live with my husband Daniel's family. My husband was my boss at the company where I worked, a company founded by his grandfather. When I joined eight years ago, my father-in-law was already the president and my grandfather-in-law was the chairman. Back then, the grandfather was still handling all the important tasks and responsibilities of the company. Two years ago, when Grandpa turned 80, he remained chairman but handed over most of the public duties to my father-in-law. Michael, you've worked hard all this time. Now leave the company matters to Christopher and take it easy, my mother-in-law said with a smile, but her words sounded sarcastic to me. Grandfather-in-law is a bit stubborn but a fair and kind person with a good reputation. In contrast, my father-in-law seemed somewhat immature, never expressing his opinions clearly and utterly unreliable compared to Grandpa. He always does whatever my mother-in-law says. My grandmother-in-law has already passed away and I never met her. My husband and I started dating when we worked together on the same product planning team three years after I joined the company. My husband, energetically leading the team, seemed reliable to me, though a bit self-righteous. Maybe I felt that way because I lost my father early and grew up with just my mother. My mother also passed away from illness two years ago, and now I have no family other than my in-laws. Shortly after I got married, my mother fell ill and needed care, so I quit my job to take care of her. The fact that my husband's family didn't object was probably due to a single comment from grandpa, it's only natural to take care of the mother who raised you alone. Don't worry and take good care of her. Thanks to that, I was able to be by my mother's side every day for a year without financial worries until she passed away. My mother-in-law seemed a bit dissatisfied, but I was truly grateful. However, since grandpa handed over the company to my father-in-law, everyone's attitudes towards him have gradually changed. They no longer listen to his opinions as much, and I can't shake the feeling that they're treating him carelessly. At first, I thought it was just my imagination, but watching my mother-in-law and husband's behavior, I can't help but feel that way. My father-in-law acts like grandpa doesn't matter now that he's almost retired. It really bothers me. Why don't you think your attitude towards grandpa is a bit cold? Patricia, so what's the big deal? Grandpa tries to talk to you, and you barely respond. You don't even try to help him like I have, trying to deal with old people. You can take care of Grandpa. You're the one with the free time. You don't have to talk like that. Quiet, I'm tired from work. Don't nag me about unnecessary things. This is how it goes. No matter what, they won't listen to me. My grandfather-in-law doesn't say anything to his family about this. Now, I'm the only one who talks to my grandfather-in-law at home. Grandpa, the weather is nice today. Shall we go for a little walk outside? Your leg seems to be healing well, and I think it will be good rehabilitation. Thank you. Let's go out for a bit then. The two of us went to the park, where there were several families with children playing around. My grandfather-in-law looked at the scene with joy. Christopher and Daniel enjoyed times like that too. Grandpa, I was busy with work and couldn't take care of the children much. Maybe that's why I couldn't raise Christopher and Daniel properly, my grandfather-in-law said with a slightly sad face 
almost like he was talking to himself. Christopher is my father-in-law and Daniel is my husband. I think about how everyone can be kinder to my grandfather-in-law, but I can't come up with a good idea. But then, my in-laws suggested building a house for my grandfather-in-law. This house is over 50 years old, right? The layout is terrible and hard to use. Instead of spending money on repairs, it would be smarter to build a new house in a more convenient location. A new house. Michael is getting older, and it was a relief he only got injured last time, but we never know what could happen next. Let's make the house barrier-free so we won't have any trouble if he needs care in the future. I see. We can even put Michael's room in the middle so everyone can take care of him easily. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Right. So it's settled then, and Michael will cover the cost. If it's a house for all of us, I'll take care of it. Talk to Mr. Jones about the money. Typical Michael, thank you. We appreciate it. My mother-in-law smiled happily. It seems to me that they only flatter him when they want money, but if everyone takes care of my grandfather-in-law after moving to the new house, I thought there could be nothing better. Mr. Jones is the company's in-house counsel and also manages my grandfather-in-law's personal assets. My grandfather-in-law liked his character and made him in-house counsel nearly 30 years ago. He is 58 now and a person my grandfather-in-law trusts the most. I've met him several times, and he seems to be a very honest person. He always cares about my grandfather-in-law's health, and sometimes I think he's more like a son than his real sons. Having such people around my grandfather-in-law makes me feel a little relieved. I wasn't informed about the details of the house being built, but my mother-in-law seemed very cheerful, and the three of them were looking at interior design magazines and discussing various things, so it seemed to be going smoothly. Then something unexpected happened. It was revealed that my grandfather-in-law had a debt of $1,820,000. Wait, what's this about $1,820,000? I exclaimed. My grandfather-in-law had become a co-signer for a loan for a friend's company, but that company was in trouble, and the debt had become my grandfather-in-law's responsibility. Wait, they're not going to take the house that's under construction, are they? Since the contract has already been completed, and as Patricia said, it's in the president's name, so it's fine. My mother-in-law seemed relieved at those words. Oh? Thank goodness. I'm glad we did it my way. Listening to that conversation, I learned for the first time that the house was in my father-in-law's name, even though my grandfather-in-law had paid for it. Putting it in my father-in-law's name seemed just like something my mother-in-law would do. I also wondered why they didn't think of giving up the house to help repay the debt. Hey, this debt is Michael's fault, and it has nothing to do with us or the company, right? Well, it was signed in Michael's name. All good, then there's no problem. I couldn't understand what was good about it, but since my grandfather-in-law didn't say anything during that conversation, I didn't intervene either. After all, it's not an amount I could handle. A few days later, my grandfather-in-law's behavior began to change gradually. Grandpa, what would you like to eat for lunch? Who are you calling Grandpa? I'm only 50. You have no right to call me that. Huh. Sorry, Emily, right? I was daydreaming. At first, I thought he was just doing the same, but when it kept happening, I started to get worried. Patricia, what are you doing? Where's my meal, Grand? I'm Emily. Patricia is your daughter-in-law. You ate your meal earlier. I didn't eat. Are you trying to starve me? I wondered if my grandfather-in-law's condition was triggered by the $1,820,000 debt, and seeing that none of his family members were trying to help him might have been a double shock. I tried to persuade my grandfather-in-law to go to the hospital, but he adamantly refused. He might not want to admit that he could have dementia. I didn't want to force him, but I felt helpless on my own. I consulted my husband, but he simply brushed it off, saying it had nothing to do with him. 
My mother-in-law wasn't any help either, so I turned to my father-in-law as the only option. Yeah, I heard from Patricia and Daniel. They think it might be dementia. Can you go to the hospital with us? I asked him. But it's not that bad yet, right? If we go to the hospital, others will find out my father has dementia, he responded. There are good medications now that can slow the progression. Well, there's no need to rush. Let's watch him a little longer. Emily is here, so they'll be fine, right? I couldn't help but feel frustrated by their lack of concern. I couldn't depend on them. Grandpa, let's go to the hospital. Let's see you properly examined, I urged. Who are you? Where are you planning to take me? You're up to no good, he retorted. I felt tears welling up, seeing how stubborn my once kind grandfather-in-law had become. But my mother-in-law just laughed, amused. Even if he was the chairman, it's over for him now. Everything, even the company, is all Christopher's, she remarked casually. Patricia, Grandpa isn't completely unaware. He's listening to everything, I protested. He'll forget everything soon. He'll start wandering and dribbling. Just thinking about it gives me chills. He's nothing but a nuisance now. How can you say that? Grandpa has worked hard for the family all his life. My mother-in-law's words made me both angry and sad, but my grandfather-in-law just smiled. See? This old man doesn't understand anything, she added, laughing. I was furious at my mother-in-law's callousness, but soon the new house would be ready. Perhaps things might change once we move there. Since it's a house that Grandpa built, the family might show some gratitude and be kind to him. I couldn't completely abandon that faint hope. Two months later, the house was finally built. For days, I had been compelled to pack my in-laws and husband's belongings, while my father-in-laws and my own items remained mostly untouched. Even when I attempted to organize my things, my in-laws and husband kept assigning me tasks, preventing any progress. However, I reasoned it would be okay to relocate the smaller items later since this house wasn't disappearing. On moving day, after transferring most of the belongings, I went to call my father-in-law, but my husband intercepted me. Uh-huh. You and Grandpa can stay here, he announced. What? You can stay in this house. We don't need any extra baggage in the new house. In other words, you and Grandpa will live here from now on, and I'll give you Grandpa's debt too. Well, you can at least be a housekeeper. Hey, let's go. Yeah, I'm coming. Good luck with all the debt repayment and live-in care. My in-laws cheerfully departed, leaving me stunned. For a while, I couldn't comprehend what had just occurred. Had they abandoned not just me, but also my grandfather-in-law? Only they would reside in the new house. It took me some time to grasp because it was beyond my imagination that someone could be so cruel. How should I explain this to my grandfather-in-law? Slowly, I made my way back to the rear room. I didn't mind caring for my grandfather-in-law at all. That was my intention from the start. As I timidly prepared to call out to him, Noticing his back facing me, he seemed to sense my presence and turned around before I could speak. Have they gone already? His expression as he uttered those words looked entirely different from what it had been just months ago. To be honest, he seemed like a different person. I wondered if a new symptom had emerged. The next moment, my grandfather-in-law smiled and his subsequent words caught me off guard. As I was talking to my grandfather-in-law, Mr. Jones came. Chairman, have you finished getting rid of the unnecessary staff? Yes, it's all done. Let's go, shall we? Huh? Where are we going? Of course, to the new house. I left the house where I had been residing, guided by my grandfather-in-law without fully understanding what was unfolding. The following month, my mother-in-law and husband bombarded me with countless calls. My grandfather-in-law declared he wouldn't entertain their calls anymore, but I answered my husband's call due to the looming divorce. Hey, Emily, is Grandpa with you? When I went to the old house, it was up for sale. 
It's not worth $1,820,000, so you can't repay the debt. Is that why you did that? My husband interrogated. What do you mean? Put grandpa on. Dad said he can't get in touch at all. That forgetful old man has done something outrageous. I knew what he was referring to, but I wanted to hear my husband's side of the story. Grandpa sold the company's stocks to the executive director. Thanks to that, the executive director became the largest shareholder and a shareholders meeting and board meeting were held, resulting in dad being dismissed as president. But the executive director is well-liked and maybe grandpa thought it was better to hand over the company to him. The executive director must have deceived the old man into selling the stocks. This is invalid. You seem to be misunderstanding something, but grandpa doesn't have dementia. If anything, he seems more coherent than before. What? Until that moving day, I genuinely believed that my grandfather-in-law had dementia. It appears that my grandfather-in-law harbored suspicions from the moment my mother-in-law mentioned building a house to live with him, so he devised a plan. He feigned dementia to observe how my in-laws and husband would react. As anticipated, they revealed their true colors one after another. In the end, they left my grandfather-in-law and me behind. I struggled to contain my laughter because everything unfolded exactly as I had expected. My grandfather-in-law then said, to deceive the enemy, you must first deceive your allies. My grandfather-in-law chuckled. He seemed to have been receiving regular updates on the company from the executive director and Mr. Jones. With my grandfather-in-law gone, my father-in-law and husband acted as they pleased, self-righteous and completely ignoring the opinions of the employees, often entertaining at the company's expense. Eventually, my grandfather-in-law handed over the company to my father-in-law, but he harbored concerns about the future, leading him to take decisive action. In the end, he decided he couldn't entrust it to his son and left it to the executive director. What about the $1,820,000 debt? My husband inquired. That's gone now, I replied. Indeed, my grandfather-in-law had been a guarantor for a friend's debt, but he had personal assets exceeding that amount. However, I deliberately omitted this information to avoid my mother-in-law and husband targeting those assets. The friend was the son of a benefactor who had helped my father-in-law when he was young. Moreover, the countryside land owned by the son was going to be developed into a resort, allowing him to sell it at a high price. You're kidding, my husband exclaimed. More importantly, are you guys okay? I asked, concerned. We're not okay. Both my father and I were denounced by the company. What should we do now? My husband lamented. What? There's also the mortgage on the house, I revealed. What? What do you mean, the mortgage on the house? My husband was taken aback. Haven't you realized it yet? The house money should have all been paid by grandpa, I clarified. Christopher signed without checking everything. It shows he really didn't have the qualities of a president. You're kidding, my husband sighed. As a consequence, my parents-in-law lost the house they had built because they couldn't pay the mortgage. Now they reside in an old apartment over 50 years old, struggling to repay the unpaid loan. Despite their all-consuming attempts to contact me, suggesting we all live together, it was impossible now. My grandfather-in-law retired from his chairman position and bought an old house in the countryside. Emily, you can go and live wherever you like, freely. You don't have to worry about living expenses, my grandfather-in-law assured me. But I chose to be with him. If I'm not in the way, please let me be with you, I expressed, tears welling up in my eyes. My grandfather-in-law's eyes welled up too. Thanks to Mr. Jones, the divorce was finalized and procedures were taken to exclude my former father-in-law and former husband from inheritance. I became my grandfather-in-law's adopted daughter. If anything happens to him, I intend to take care of him until the end. Now, the two of us enjoy working in the fields together. Dad, look at this radish. It's big. 
I exclaimed. As warm moments float in the pouring sunlight, I wish for these days to continue, even just one day longer.